Welcome to this week's edition of The Left Bench TV. I'm Danielle Stein. And I'm Alex Flum. This week's top story, the DMV to UMD movement is heating up, specifically from our southern neighbor. Three new recruits from Virginia have committed to the university. Four-star defensive tackle Brayon Gaddy and his three-star twin of the same position, Brandon. Terps also received a verbal from three-star offensive lineman Tyron Hunt. While Maryland has added some young talent recently, they've also lost a big name. In November, top recruit defensive end Joshua Kando announced his decommitment from the university. Florida State and Penn State have been named possible destinations for Kando. Now it's time for this week's Rapid Fire Recap, and we'll begin with football. The Terps are going bowling. After finishing with a 6-6 six six record, the Terps will head to the Motor City, where they will take on the Boston College Eagles in the Quick Lane Bowl on December 26th. Yeah, and a trio of Terps were named to the postseason All-Big Ten Honorable Mention team. Senior left tackle Michael Dunn and junior linebackers Jermaine Carter Jr. and Shane Cockrell were given the honors. And speaking of honors, last week 57 Maryland student-athletes were named to the academic All-Big Ten team. Big names include football's Ty Johnson, field hockey's Velma Luce, so men's soccer's Cody Niedermeyer, and women's soccer's and TLB's TV's very own Cassie Phillips. Congrats to Cassie. Men's basketball, they continue their run, currently 11-1. Freshman trio of Kevin Herter, Anthony Cowan, and Justin Jackson has impressed. The Terps will start conference play on December 27th. The women's team is steamrolling through their schedule at 12-0, bringing them to the number four spot on the polls. Things will really start to heat up on December 29th when the Terps host defending national champs UConn. Well, the gymnastics team, they got things started for this year with their red versus black meet on Friday. Six freshmen performed at the Xfinity Center for the first time in their career. The team will get the season rolling when they compete alongside the wrestling squad on January 8th for the Beauty and the Beast meet. And finally, wrestling fell to Rutgers 21-13 in their first home meet on Sunday, but standouts Alfred Bannister and Justin Alexander picked up wins for the Terps. Now let's slow things down. On Saturday, I saw the Terps just edge out the St. Peter's Peacocks. Let's see the highlights. Maryland came out hot with 14 unanswered, with freshman Kevin Herter and Justin Jackson leading the charge. The Peacocks finally got on the board with 12 minutes remaining in the first. A beautiful flip from Tchaikovsky led the Terps to finish 40-18 to at the half, feeling confident going into the second. There was a change in momentum from here on out. The Terps went just 2 of 10 from 3 after halftime after previously going 5 of 8. The Peacocks were able to connect. An overall sloppy second half for the Terps led the Peacocks to cut their deficit to just 10 in the end with a final score of 66-56 Maryland. Terps may be 11-1, but the wins have not come easy. With Big Ten play coming up, it could get tougher. Let's see what Jared and Jared have to say about the state of Maryland basketball. Thanks, guys. So, Jared, Maryland basketball can't seem to put together a complete game. What do you think the deal is with that? Well, if you've watched Maryland basketball over the years, you know it's never pretty. But this team, they just have a knack. They seem uncomfortable playing with the lead. And for some reason... They really played with a lead pretty much all year. Well, even when they do play with a lead, it's almost like, you know, they're looking over their shoulder. Like, when are, when's this other team going to come back? When's the run going to happen? And it always does. So this team, they need to learn to play... Not even 40 minutes, just 32, 35. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to us, see. They're giving us a heart attack. I'd like to see some more, you know, bigger sense of urgency out of the team. You know, they play that diamond pressure occasionally uh, with the full court. I'd like to see some of that. Uh, just, you know, kind of bring the energy up because at times they look sluggish. Um, and so things to improve on, uh, I think that would be one of them. I think it would be good if, if they could, you know, play a little more of that pressure, if they could run some kind of more exciting offense, let's say. Um, there was a play, I guess, last week in the Oklahoma State game where Anthony Cowan was just like dribbling the ball in the half court circle for like 25 of the 30 second yeah, shot clock. We call a timeout. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? What do you think they can improve? No, I agree with you. I think urgency is one thing. Free throws have been inconsistent all season. They're shooting, I believe, 70 percent. I mean, it's good. It's not great, especially heading into the most the toughest part of their schedule. Right. That's got to improve. Rebounding needs to improve. They're without Demonte Dodd right now. Tchaikovsky has been playing well, but they need to be stronger inside and just more movement yeah. off the ball. I, I think for the most part they've played pretty good defense, um, but I agree with you. I'd like to see some more offense, especially as we go into Big Ten play. 
uh, we're playing teams that we're, we're not going to be bigger than them all the time. We've played a bunch of teams that are kind of small, um, but we're not going to be bigger than our opponents in the Big Ten, uh, and, and it's going to be tougher to you know, kind of assert our athletic dominance over them like we can against you know, Howard and, and Miss, or George Jacksonville State, excuse me. So you know, it's, it'll be tougher, uh, so I'd like to, to see maybe Jared Nickens heat up a little bit, um, just get the offense some kind of spark. Uh, he's been just god awful all year, um, which sucks because I like Jared Nickens. We have the same name. Right. But he, he could come on the show one time. Maybe. Yeah. Jared Nickens, come on the show. Um, but make threes first. Um, so, yeah, if he could, you know, get something going, if anyone could get something going, really. But, but Jared Nickens, to me, what, what I think the issue is, is that he just looks like he's shooting too quickly. His motion's going too fast. Uh, I'm not a shot doctor per se. Um, I stopped playing basketball when I was like 12 because I was a short white kid, but like, you know, it happens. Um, that. Yeah. Okay. So to me, when I watch Jared Nickens, it's just hard to watch. To me, it looks like he's all confidence. He's totally gone. He has no idea what he's doing. And remember, this is a guy, he scored 14 points in an NCAA tournament game this calendar year. So he is not far removed from being not only an important player on this team, but a good player on this team. So to see just the fall from grace is really It's been real tough. To yeah. All right, that's all we have for Jared and Jared this week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, guys. Well, Jared and Jared aren't the only ones who live for Maryland basketball. TLB TV's Anna Muckerman took a closer look at some of Maryland's super fans. The details are a little hazy. I don't remember the exact time. Cause, like, I just kind of woke up and didn't even look at the clock came over here. Probably like 9, 10, somewhere around that. But no matter the time, Trey Crump has been here all day. Friends that don't come this early for games know I do this, and they give me a hard time about it all the time. But what is he waiting for? There's something wrong with us. Um, we're kind of crazy, but like we love getting here early for basketball games. We love like being like front row. We just like we love watching basketball. Hat, scarf, and gloves. I'm frozen. But some of these 30 people have been here since 9 a.m. This is like number two. Um, work is number one. This is number two, and school is number three. Julie Johnson knows her priorities. I make sure my phone is fully charged and I make sure I have snacks. She's one of the few girls who came early for the Oklahoma State game. You know, like it's amazing how different some of the conversations are but I'm the only girl here. And despite the cold, she's determined to cheer on her team. All I wanted to do was go home and get in bed but there was a game to be watched. So. That night, the Terps beat Oklahoma State by a single point in the final seconds of the game. If these guys were still around, they'd probably say it was worth the wait. In College Park, I'm Anna Muckerman. More on basketball. Thursday night, Brianna Jones led the Terps to an easy win with her career-high 30 points. Yeah, Max Marcilla, he was there with the coverage for TLB TV, and he's with us now to talk some Maryland basketball. Absolutely. It was a big night for the Terps and a big game for Jones. Here are some of the highlights. Brianna Jones could do it all from the paint tonight. Here she is early with a nice layup up and in, and later from the other side, Jones a pump fake and puts it in again. When you thought that she could do everything from the paint, she took it to the outside with this nice little jumper, gets the friendly bounce. Jones made 14 of her 16 shots on the night. I was definitely surprised um, that uh, there wasn't a double team coming because I did, like, in the first couple of sessions, I was catching it, looking over my shoulder, waiting for it. Um, but I think I just took advantage of that tonight. So we've seen the usual early season dominance from this women's basketball team. Brianna Jones, she's just been fantastic. What has she meant for this team so far this year? Right. Well, she's 6'3", and, and she just dominates both in and out of the paint. I mean, we saw it the other day when she set a career high with 30 points. Back to the basket, layups. She had a nice turnaround jumper at one point. I mean, she's just been dominating in the paint. She actually leads the NCAA, shooting 70% so far on the year, and that's something that I think we could see continue even as we get into Big Ten play. Brianna Jones, last year too, consistently high field goal percentage, very efficient in the paint, and really leading a Terps offense that has been spectacular so far. Now the Terps haven't really faced too tough of competition, but we have UConn coming up in a few. What can we expect for that? Right, now that's obviously Maryland's biggest test, arguably the best team in the nation. They have been for the last couple of years, and it'll be an interesting matchup because there's a couple of signs that might point in Maryland's direction. First of all, 
UConn, that is the second game of a three-game road trip. So maybe they'll, you know, be on the road, not really accustomed to everything just yet. And also, UConn has had some trouble rebounding the ball against ranked opponents. And granted, they are 5-0 and against ranked opponents, but they have been out-rebounded. Maryland, number two in the country in rebounding margins. So it's a nice matchup. The Terps will get a chance to prove how good, how good, just how good they can be against really a top-tier team. Well, thank you, Max, for coming on. Thank you, guys. Terps Gymnastics got their start this Friday during the Black vs. Red meet. Bridget Divers and Micaiah Cherry have the story. I'm Micaiah Cherry. And I'm Bridget Divers, and we are at the annual Red vs. Black Women's Gymnastics meet. Where 12 out of 17 gymnasts are putting their skills to the test. On Friday night, the Terps gave fans a preview of this year's team. Star freshman Alicia Farina comes to College Park from Ohio. She's the only high school gymnast in the history of the state to receive a perfect 10 on vault. And she did it three times. A big addition for head coach Brett Nelligan's program. I think we have some exciting newcomers. Alicia Farina as a freshman right now. Um, she's towards the back of the lineup on three, maybe four events. I've wanted to come here for a long time. I committed my, the beginning of my sophomore year. So uh, it's really exciting to finally be here and like actually being able to compete for Maryland. And from a rookie to a vet, senior Emily Brockmuller shines in floor and bars. I want to compete all four events. In previous years, I've only competed two or three out of the four. So my goal is this year is to compete four for individual, and then as a team, I'm hoping that we'll get to regionals again this year. Some other Terps to look out for. Shinel Agriant on beam. Other senior leaders, Leah Slobodin and Sarah Fowler. And junior, Dominique Trotter. They, if they put in the work, you know, great things happen. And this group's been working extremely hard. I was, I was pleased with what they did tonight. And I think if we just, a little more cleaning, a little more polish, I think we can really go far. We hope to continue to see success as the Terps tumble into the season. I'm Micaiah Cherry. And I'm Bridget Divers reporting for TLB TV. Now for the reason you watch TLB TV each week, where we'll leave you with one final thought. So Juan Herrera, take it away. Thanks, Alex. With 2016 coming to an end, I'd like to take a look back at the biggest sporting events of this year. We had the Running Man Challenge happen, which started here in Maryland. The Warriors and the Cleveland Indians blew a 3-1 lead, and Michael Phelps won a bunch of gold medals at the Olympics. But I think the biggest sporting event from this year was when Maryland beat Rutgers to become bowl eligible. Yes, despite losing four consecutive games, the Terrapins bounced back to beat Rutgers and they'll now face Boston College for the Quick Lane Bowl. And with that being said, go Terps and Happy New Year. All right, well, thanks, Juan. That's about all the time we have for today. We've got a great New Year coming ahead of us, winter break. Any big plans? I'm, act I'm going to the college football playoff, actually. Alabama and Washington facing off down in Atlanta. Very fun. Are you going to do some running man challenge anytime soon? Maybe. <laughs> maybe down there in Argentina I'll be able to do it. Very cool. Bring it down to Argentina. Well, that's all the time we have today. And for the Left Bench TV, I'm Danielle Stein. And I'm Alex Flum. And this is Juan Herrera. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good winter break.